Welcome to Conversations with Toy, a blogcast tackling life one episode at a time. This is the time to air out life's craziest moments. This space is all about speaking about life's hang-ups and ways in which we can leave better than when we started. Topics are all about ways we can find space to be better in life, love, mental space and health. Happy Friday. I hope you have had the most amazing week. Listen, every time I come on this podcast, I always talk about how long a week is, but this week has been the one of the most strangest weeks possible. But before I get into how the strange week came about, can we just talk about the fact that if this is your first time tuning into Conversations with Toy, welcome. I hope that you find that this space is welcoming to you, that you learn something, you take away something, you realize just how normal you may be. And everything that you've been thinking and then struggling with this week, I hope that it is more lightened or that you again have all the tools that you need or gather some of the tools that you need to make it through yet another day, another week, another month, because we believe in not only surviving, but as well as thriving. So welcome to this podcast. You may be listening to this podcast while you're folding up clothes, cleaning up, working out, whatever it is, we're sending good uh, vibes your way because again, we always could use good vibes. This Friday, I am ecstatic because there is a lot of movement. If you don't know or are familiar with me, I am Toy of Conversations with Toy. And not only am I a podcaster, but I'm a content creator here in the Philadelphia area, a blogger, lots of titles, but I love to write. I love to create content, especially around um, lifestyle and mental health and wellness. And so if you are on my socials, which you can find me at Toy Time Blog on just about every social stream that there is, I do my best to balance out having a little bit of fun, also living and also being honest about the days when life isn't as fun. When life is, isn't as perfect and life isn't as, you know, edited because that's really how life works. A lot of times we curate content, but content comes from the fact that life isn't always as perfect as the curation looks. And there are times when I create content that I don't edit it as much as people think that I should because life doesn't work that way. However, welcome to this space. Again, there are times in this space where we will laugh. There are times where we will cry. Sometimes we will think. But again, the concept of this conversations is to curate conversations that again, resonate with people, real people who don't always have their lives put together, real people who struggle like myself from time to time. And that's quite okay. Uh, This week has been strange because if you are here on this earth, especially here in the Philadelphia area, New York was hit pretty bad. All of the smoke from the fires from Canada have really hit. And it's to the point where hopefully it's going to clear up today. That is the goal. They're claiming that it's going to go away today. But if not, people who have respiratory issues, please do your due justice to stay inside as much as you possibly can, because the smoke can be very damaging to those who are sensitive, you know, those who have some type of um asthmatic or some type of breathing issues and things like that. You want to stay inside as much as possible. I do have one child who has asthma. So we are doing everything we can to monitor um, his or hers breathing and, you know, make sure that we are very watchful. But this week was strange between the smoke. I felt like this week, my days were off, like completely off in a real way. I don't even know how it possibly came to be. But what I will say is that the week was stressful in just from the concept of one day I woke up and I thought that, oh, today is Tuesday. And here it was like a whole Wednesday. So I almost missed putting up the content that I wanted to put up for that day. But, you know, grace is always there. And I got through it. I don't know. My husband claims that I'm not the only one, but he does understand how I don't (laughs) recognize the days. But sometimes I just, it's just weirded out. Like, I just don't know what day it is. However, I will say that um, I'm glad that it is Friday. I am glad because I have a brand trip. Yes, a brand trip that is taking place today. So I will report back next week um, on it. And if you follow me on social media, you may see it before next Friday. So that may be your plug to go ahead and follow, follow, follow. 
but it should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. And then I have another brand trip next week. I'm actually looking forward to that as well. So life is really, really good. I can't, I don't even have a complaint. Do you ever just have moments in life when you're just like so super grateful and you're just like, you know what? I don't have anything to complain about. Now, again, life does hit you and can hit you hard at any moment. So there are times when I'm like, Ugh, life is a little sticky, but I can't say that right now. And I'm grateful for that. Um, with Friday, we have a new guest. We have two new guests, almost a co-host. We have two co-hosts for today, Tamar and Lane. And we are going to talk about what is self-care versus self-preservation. Do you believe that they're one and the same? Are they different? How do they differ? And this would be for those who are looking to figure out what they can do to help with their self-care. I am a huge component of self-care. And the reason why is because when I was dealing with postpartum depression, this was years ago when I had, I think when I even when I had my first child, but specifically when I had my second child, you know, when you have two kids, you're always trying to figure out how you can divide space, make sure everybody gets what they need. And oftentimes, at least for myself, I discovered that I was putting myself on the back burner. Um, but my husband, or at the time, he was my fiance, and he literally was trying to get me out of the house, go do something for yourself, take care of yourself. But again, being stubborn and the tourist that I am, I didn't do that. And I paid the price. And the price was in putting myself last was not having what I needed, not being focused for the things that I wanted, um, being semi miserable, if I can be honest with you, uh, miserable, because again, when you don't pour into yourself, you literally are making yourself struggle, struggle with things that honestly don't need to be. And so with that being said, I just found that it became difficult to manage myself. And nobody really wants or should want to be in that situation. So today's guests, let me just tell you, they are absolutely amazing. They are the podcast hosts of Laughing Without Liquor. And I think that that's amazing. Now, we always generally talk about different drinks of cocktails of the of the week or whatever the case may be. Today, we are not going to have a cocktail of the week because it doesn't make sense to have a cocktail of the week when we're talking to our podcast hosts who don't. Um, subscribe to drinking alcohol. Now, my whole thing with alcohol, again, I honestly believe that if you're not able to have fun, live life and do the things that need to happen without alcohol, then there's something wrong, right? This is just my personal opinion. I could be wrong, but honestly, I honestly think that anybody should be able to have a good time without it, really. And I feel like it's crazy how in this society, we feel like we have to have a cocktail. Don't get this twisted. Now, I enjoy a good cocktail that for me is not going to change because I believe I can handle and have been handling my mental health with it and I have not been mixing the two. So that's for me. But for these two young ladies, they are doing it without alcohol, without adding any of these extra things that we add in to make ourselves appear to be, to do, to all the things. So we have both Tamar and Lane. Now, Lane Kennedy and Tamara Medford are two women who have chosen to live alcohol free and are very passionate about sharing their experiences with others. Their parents and as parents, they understand the challenges of navigating life without alcohol, but also have found that it can be completely and incredibly fun and a rewarding journey. Through their blog, podcast, social media channels, they hope to inspire and empower women to embrace an alcohol-free lifestyle, as well as find joy in the messy, hilarious adventures that come with it. Their mission is to help women learn to laugh without the booze and to create a community of support and encouragement along the way. So I just want to say thank them. I just want to thank them for their time. And this conversation was very eye-opening because, again, I believe that we should be able to learn how to pers preserve ourselves. How can we make sure that we show up for ourselves? And, and to be honest with you, we're going to talk about it, but it's going to be so much intention. You have to be completely intentional about how you spend your time, what you give your time away to. And this conversation was absolutely hilarious in every way, but it did. And again, 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 I said it didn't, but again, it all boils down to can you live and be and survive and show up and thrive? Like if you are just simply surviving, you're doing something cor incorrectly. And a lot of times when we're in survival mo mode versus thriving, oftentimes we're in our head telling ourselves the things that we can't do. I listen to a lot of people when they say like, oh, I wish I could. I would love to, but 
it's a lot of negativity that goes along with that because people will say, well, you don't know my journey. You're absolutely correct. I don't know your journey, but I do know that there's within your own journey, regardless of how beautiful, how messy and everything else in between, I feel like there's a huge part that we play that we are almost self-sabotaging ourselves. Your journey isn't going to look like mine's and my journey isn't going to look like yours, but I do have a, a point of that. I can do something about where I am. I can make a decision. I can make a choice for where I am. So again, Thank you, Tamar. And thank you, Lane. As we get into this conversation, listen, take some notes if you're able to go back and listen to the podcast and also support their podcast. I put in the show notes, as I always do, to make sure that you can click on all the things, because again, I always want to make sure it's very, very clickable and you get what you need. So let's step into this conversation. Thank you, Tamar. And thank you, Lane. All right. Conversations with Toy Family. We have a treat. Okay. You already know how I love to do. I love bringing in guests because why? I feel like we learn so much when we listen to other people have conversations. And it's probably the same conversations that you're having with your friends, or you probably need to be having with your friends, especially either with uh, with or without cocktails is your business. We're not going to judge here, but we have Tamar, we have Lane. We are having a conversation about self-care, very specific self-care self -care when it comes to being moms. So if you're not a mom, it's all good. Listen, you can learn from just about anything. Like as women, I think we struggle with our self-care. We're always going to be the type that's going to be caregivers and always putting each other, other people first. And we're last, you know, that's just the, the way that it works. So Tamar Lane, thank you for being a part of this conversation. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. All right. So let's get into the self-care conversation because, you know, just with today, we, we fail at it. It's a great concept of self-care, you know, taking care of yourself, um, doing things that make you feel good, filling up your cup first, all the things that we hear, but self-care in and of itself is, can be, or feel like a chore sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's say you. So, you know, tomorrow and I've been talking about how the self-care like it makes me crazy. Like, let's do self-care. Let's go get manicures. Let's go sit by the pool or sit go out. Like that just doesn't work for me. Like it just doesn't work for me. This is Lane. Um, so, so tomorrow and I've been talking about, uh, self-preservation. We've mm -hmm. kind of re, uh, we, we want to make us <laughs> want to throw this out there to women self-preservation and that feels different, looks different. Uh, and then it's not self-care. Like, I don't know, that's self-care. <laughs> so define what you mean, self-preservation, because, you know, people are so used to hearing self-care that your definition may be completely different. So define what that means to you. Self-preservation for me is delightful. That means I'm really um, looking at my life from a different perspective with love and compassion for myself, <laughs> for myself. Right. Right. So that means I may leave the dogs at home and go on a walk by myself, right? Because there's a lot of times where it's like, that's a thing I have to do, walk the dogs. And, you know, I have two Irish wolfhounds and it's a lot. And, and I can sometimes say, oh, that's part of my self-care routine. I'm outside being all natural and all yay, but mm -hmm. it's a, it's a headache. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. So it, like, if I say, oh, it's about self-preservation, that means that I'm walking to the park by myself. And I'm going to sit on the bench by myself and I'm going to look at the view over the city because I have a beautiful skyline here in San Francisco by myself. Completely I changes. It. I love that, that concept recently for mother's day, I went out by myself um, because, you know, the whole concept of, you know, as mother's day, we're supposed to be around our kids. We're supposed to do uh -huh. all those things and great for those who decide to do that. But for myself, I needed some peace and quiet and yes. that getting the heck out of Dodge and leaving my house. <laughs> For a meal that I didn't have to share with somebody or just hearing somebody ask me to do 20 million things while my husband sits right next to me and he's more than capable, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they mm -hmm. will bypass him and ask me something. So I, I understand that. I love that. So I what, love that. Do you still agree with the self-preservation? If you do, what's your definition? How do you fit in that? I do. And when I think about self-preservation, it's putting myself first sometimes so mm -hmm. I can care more for those that I love, because I think, you know, as moms and I'm a co-parent now and a new co-parent, now I see that if you don't preserve, like if I don't preserve me, 
<laughs> then I'm going to not handle things well, right? I'm going to be emotionally unstable and um, I'm a pretty calm person as is, but for me, it it means disconnecting sometimes. Like you said, right? I, I love this concept of Mother's Day, actually the mothers going out and doing what they want to do. And because it's Mother's Day, so let let other people take care of business for a little bit. So it is really just loving myself enough to know that it matters how much I take care of myself and the things I do to love myself, really, which is, you know, I'm preserving me because I want to be around a long time. Yeah, that part, <laughs> that part. Uh -huh. What have been some of the biggest things that you've noticed when you're talking about self-preservation and taking care of yourself when it relates to the people around you? Because I'll say for myself, it's the drama of like people respecting my space and my time and not trying to interject themselves into that or make it to be like, oh, I'm going to come along. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> Let me go. I'll be all right. I'll, I'll hit you up when I get back. Um, what, what's what been your thought process about either one about how you take care of yourself in relation to other people? I say I have to go now. <laughs> Like, I don't know. I've set up really t kind of hard, well, hard. That's not, that's not the right word. I've trained for lack of a better word, trained uh, my kiddo to know that when the door is shut, he's not to come in here. Uh, so that's a part of it. You know, they do still bust in when I'm like meditating and then I'm like, what are you doing? Uh, but this kind of consistent, I'm just not available right now. I'm just not available right now. Uh, I'm just not available right now. So the more that I say it, they're like, oh, I guess she's not available. I'll, I'll go ask dad now. Yeah. And it's like, oh I, yeah, you can do that. Right. Because like, usually he'll be, all right. <laughs> he'll be all right. And then he usually gets what he wants when he goes and talks to his dad. So it's like, come on. Like it's a win-win for all of us. It, yes. <laughs> You can get what you want. I'm getting what I want. Right. Let, let it happen. Right. Let it happen. Yeah. And Samar, what's your what's your concept of self-preservation and concern with everyone else around you? So after I'm done my day of work, I need at least a 10 to 15 minute period where I go and I will isolate. Either I'll go outside by myself or I go to my bedroom. If it's raining, we're in the Pacific Northwest, so it rains a lot here. Um, but I'll just go and I tune out, I put headphones on and I'll usually listen, listen to some light music or I'll do a meditation, but I need to completely disconnect because I'm so online all day, every day that it's like, I need my brain to like, kind of go mm -hmm. back down to its neutral state so that when I engage with the kids that I'm better able to be present for them because they all have ADHD, ODD and FAS so coming into a conversation that's like all this talking right away gets very overwhelming. <laughs> so I need to disconnect again and just, you know, get my time. And we actually, my partner and I both have conversations, especially with the youngest, she's seven, saying, you know, the more time that we can get for ourselves, the better that we can show up for you. And, you know, she'll often say, you know, then mommy can be better. And so, and they understand that, you know, and we purposely or intentionally go away for weekends every month now to, to be better people. I love hearing that because we, we know we deny ourselves so many times mm -hmm. um, that moment to do that. Cause again, the guilt of, well, you know, if I do that, then I'm going to look like the bad mom. Um, if I do that, then people are going to judge my my mommyhood, especially when you're listening to other people say, like, I go away once a month. Um, I'm like, team, sign me up because we all need to get the heck out of here and <laughs> reconnect, even if it's with ourselves, a partner, whomever it is. And I feel like society, I know when I was growing up, when I first had my first child, my mom was like, when you have that first kid, your life is over. You got to put everything on pause. And I was like, oh my God, um, what have I done? Like, yeah. <laughs> What's happening for Jesus? But then you realize like after you get into it, like you really do need that time to gather your thoughts. Absolutely. And I so mean, the time. generation, right? Mm -hmm. I was raised the same way. My mom was a stay-at-home mom my dad always worked and it was, that's what you did. And I remember, you know, when I had thought maybe one day I'd have kids or get married, I'm like, mm -mm, 
I'm not doing that. Like, I'm sorry, but I can't live that life. And I need to take care of myself too. So I'm definitely learning still, but it's, uh, it's much better and I'm good. I'm much better at taking the time that I need. Yes. God knows. Um, <laughs> so we talked about the relation to other people. Have you ever had either one had struggles within yourself? Because it's one thing to know, like if you stop the distractions from other people, but has there ever been a moment when you've been your own distraction or you've been the person that's talked yourself out of that self-preservation moment? All every day, <laughs> every day I have to recommit every day. I have to like, re like come back to myself Otherwise I have 500 projects. I have a house with 5,000 things to do, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So I, it's really about honoring the self, honoring me like, okay, this is the commitment today. We're going to, you know, take a walk without the dogs. Uh, we're going to make sure that we eat three times. We're not going to just snack all day. Right. So I've kind of set some guardrails, so to speak up for myself. So I don't just fail I I've learned that if I don't have the guardrails up of here's what the, here's what the agenda is, or here's what the perfect day for lane looks like <laughs> I am doomed. Right. I'm literally oh. just, I'm doing 5,000 things and I'm working on 500 projects and nothing gets done. <laughs> and at the end of the day, I am so burnt out and I'll call tomorrow and I'll be like, I'm so tired. I don't know what's going on. What's wrong with me? <laughs> overwhelmed and stressed, yeah. not enough in your cup. Like you just got too many things, too many irons in the, in the fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean it, you know, I think about it is when you're trying to make healthier choices in terms of lifestyle and what you eat, because you know, it feels better and it's that, Oh, I'm going to have that piece of cake today. And of course it causes that snowball effect. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's an area of my life that I have to work on. And especially if I want to have energy to be a good co-parent. Um, but there's times I'm a bit of a workaholic as well. And I, because I love what we do so much, I will find myself going, okay, I'm going to skip that walk in the morning and <laughs> to get in an extra half an hour, because I really want to get this project done because I tend to take on too much. And then at the end of the day, I'm, I'm tired. So I'm not actually as productive as I could be. And I find myself pushing my day back even further. So now I've actually done less in an extended period of time. And then it's like, okay, well now I just got to jump into dinner and I'm not going to have that downtime. And my mind feels like it's going to explode. And, and there's something about loving what you do right? There's something about like, what's what, how do you balance that out? Like we love what we do. I mean, Tamar will send me an email. It's three 30 in the morning. I'm like, what are you doing? You know? And she's like, well, I'm, I'm loving what I'm doing and I'm in the zone and I'm in my flow. So there's this kind of, we, we have to recognize like, what's the difference between being in our flow and really loving it. And, and then that self-preservation, where, where is that? Where's that line? It's like, whoa, so, like, I think it's harder when you have a business that's online. Yeah. Because you're going to be online. Like you're going to be on your computer. You're going to be on your laptop. You're There's always something to do. Like there's never mm -hmm. not a point where you, for myself, and I'm sure you you as well, both of you, where you're like, oh, well, I could just log in real quick and no do A, B, and C, and then it'll be okay. But like you said, Tamar, you like, you tell yourself like, oh, it's, it's going to help me for tomorrow. If I'm working ahead, I've told myself that lie too. Like I'm working ahead. And meanwhile, nine o'clock at night, I'm sitting on my couch to the world, not even in a real bed, not even in my real pajamas, because I'm just so exhausted because I'm trying to do too much. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, if we can be very intentional about the time that we work in, for example, we can be way more productive. I mean, I remember before I was self-employed, I did it. This was a total side business and I could do everything I needed to in two hours every day. But then, of course, as soon as I'm like, I'm going to do this full time, well, the same amount of work took eight hours. And mm -hmm. then I just added more to my plate. So <laughs> it's um, and, and when I miss things like that morning walk, I don't get what I need first thing to get that self-preservation. All of a sudden, I'm running on survival mode for the whole yeah. rest of the day. And right. that just hurts. And too, it's like a 
it's like an envelope. It's like a, a, it's a mountain effect because if you do it one day, then by Tuesday, you'll be like, well, you know, I didn't do as much. I'm just at something small, but then really you just forget about it because it's more work to be done. Cause by the time Tuesday hit, whatever you didn't do Monday, just sit at the top. So then your stress level of, I have to complete this. I have to do this. It's just, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Like even today, for example, my partner said, can you pick up the youngest from school? And I'm like, well, I have this, this, this to do. And I almost wanted to say, no, I can't. But I'm like, yes, actually I can, because I can go for a half an hour and take a walk up the street to go mm -hmm. pick her up, which will be good for me, gives us good bonding. And that's self-preservation because I'm yeah. stepping away from my desk. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> One good choice today, a really good choice today. That's a good choice. <laughs> I'm glad for you. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to step away from once we're done. Like, I'm going to step away and do some things just because, like, <laughs> again, like, the whole just put everything on your plate, it'll get done eventually. You know, this whole thought process, we have to do more to get more. Um, doesn't always work. Sometimes you can do less and actually get more. And especially when it's more for yourself and helping you to, you know, to feel good about yourself. Like you said, especially with those food choices at my birthday was just a couple of days ago. I got cake. I'm like, oh, I'm going to cut it up. Like, oh, I'm like, no, you know, let me get downstairs and like get some water and get an apple because I want to be able to have enough energy to do what I need to do and then be able to log out and enjoy the rest of my night. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the online world, like doing business online, it, there's some kind of, uh, the more, more, more kicks in because like when I'm doing laundry, I don't want to do more laundry. Mm -mm, no, right. Like all. it's like, no, but when I'm on that screen and I'm like, okay, I got to do the email and then I got to check this. And then I got to log into the community and I got to right? it's like, uh, more, more, more. So I think one of the things that I've been doing uh, for self-preservation is again, setting, like, I know that I'm going to be done by three o'clock no matter what I right. shut it down, shut it down. That has been huge for me. I love that. Mm -hmm. I actually, I mean, cause I, I need to start doing more of that. And I kept telling myself too, like just hard stops. Yeah. The hard stops need to be more increased. And also too, because I also do events at night. I've been putting like no media days on my calendar. So it doesn't matter what comes in, nice. who's inviting me. Um, there's a no, I'm sorry, this is my blockout date. So, yeah. you know, I said to somebody, you just missed, you just got in right before the blockout date, just because I'm like, once the blockout date gets on my calendar, then I just honor it. And I don't, I don't make adjustments. I don't make amends. If I miss something, I miss something. That's I huge self-preservation. <laughs> yes. Yeah, to say no to yourself or say no to, usually just not even no to yourself, you no to something or somebody else. Because something and somebody will jump on your calendar in a hot minute. Well, and I think one of the, the like, if I think about all the top things we can do for self-preservation, and I think back to my journey, I used to be, yes, sure, I can do that. Yes, I'd overschedule, overcommit to everything. The number one top thing for self-preservation is having the ability to say no and being okay with it. <laughs> right. And sometimes you don't even have to explain to other adults. There's not exactly. a, well, I'm sorry, I can't because it's just, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Yeah. I'm unable to do that. I'm unable to, I'm, I'm not, I'm not available. And sometimes we feel like we have to give like the no, but see, because that doesn't always work mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. you know, other people are going to take care of themselves. You would think to a certain degree and while we're not taking care of ourselves and piling more on it, other people is doing what they need to do. We would hope, Right. It's, it's so funny you're saying that because I used to explain myself in emails. <laughs> oh, I can't do that because of blah, 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 blah. Now I'm just like, I can't make it. Like that's enough. That's literally <laughs> it. You don't really need any other fluff to that. Right. Right. Because what you just said, they're adults, right? Adults can handle and manage their own emotions. I'm not responsible for somebody else's emotional welfare or their right preservation. <laughs> right. Because I'm trying to preserve me. So I yes. can't preserve me and you at the same time. And mm -hmm. my no is a no. It's just like, you know, I had to learn to just exercise my no muscles a lot longer, a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. And just be used to and comfortable, just be like, I can't. Sorry. Yeah. I'm not even sorry. Just I can't. Just can't do it. Not right now. <laughs> yeah. People, people pleasing is not self-preservation. At mm -hmm. all. 
No. <laughs> it's <not laughs> the worst thing. Actually, I think that's actually more to our detriment when we when we're so in that people pleasing uh pleasing era of our lives where we're trying to make everybody happy or or everybody like the decisions that we're making, like us, uh mm -hmm. agree with us. Uh that doesn't work out. That doesn't work out. And then we'll get mad at the person for doing that to us when in reality it is us doing it to us. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I can't mm -hmm. believe they did that to me, but it's like, no, it's actually, you did it to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are some of your go-tos? I know you said about, uh, Lane, about doing the walk without the dogs. Is there, is there other things that you put into your schedule that are help you with your self-preservation? Well, a hundred percent every day I have to meditate every day I wake up and it's the first thing that I do. And, you know, it's, it's not 20 minutes. It's not 30 minutes. It's a full hour practice. Uh, and people are like, why, how, what do you mean? And I've just learned about myself that I need that full time, uh, to, you know, reset my whole body. And so I, I start that way. And then the other thing I'll do is that sometimes I'll sneak in another, like just a 10 minute or a 15 minute later in the day, a little meditation. Okay. Super, super, super imp important to me. And I talk to people like I don't text people. I get on the phone and I chat. I talk. I want to hear their voice. I want th them to hear me. So I'm pro having conversations with other people just so I'm not feeling so alone or isolated or like nobody loves me because it's really easy for me to go down that rabbit hole. Like nobody cares. It's not true. Right. You just didn't call anybody. You didn't hear anyone's voice today. Right. <laughs> because I've got those 5,000 things that I'm doing, right? Like, all those know. emails and all those go on social and do all this stuff. And yeah, I get it. It's crazy. Tamar, what's some of your go-to self-preservation? Uh, detaching is one of them, making sure I, you know, can be present with myself. That's my, one of my biggest ones. The other one I was going to mention is sometimes I'll take myself out for a coffee or a tea, mm -hmm. you know, I'll get in my car, I'll go pick up something fancy, um, decaffeinated these days. Uh, and I just go and I'll either hang out in the sunshine. I used to have an area where I used to live where it overlooked, you know, this really beautiful mountain, which is actually a volcano. And I just sit there and hang out in nature and watch it. Um, but like Lane mentioned, probably one of the biggest things that I'll do is talk to a friend. Um, because when I've got you know, all this stuff floating around in my head, I feel that, you know, myself personally, I always tried to be really strong and handle everything myself for so long, because that's how I was raised is you don't show your weaknesses, because mm -hmm. you kind of have to suck it up and take care of everybody around you. Um, but today, I'm not afraid to call somebody and say, I'm just not right in the head right now. Like I'm thinking all these thoughts, and I don't know how to handle them, or just, you know, verbalizing it it just gets it off your shoulder. And, you know, the women that I surround myself with, especially since coming into, you know, recovery, I live in long-term recovery. I have women that create this amazing safe space that I can tell them anything. And I mm -hmm. think we hold on to too much and that starts to chip away at us. So self-preservation sometimes is just letting it all out <laughs> and not in a venting way, but right. in a, I'm telling you what's going on. I could really use uh, some help here or a solution because it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to not be strong every minute of the day. And I think as mothers, you mm -hmm. know, it's like, we're always there. We're always on, but it's okay to be off once in a while. Yeah. I, I love both of your examples. I know for myself, um, sometimes, especially with my kids, because they're old enough to kind of, I'm getting to understand like how to teach them to do the same thing. And so sometimes I'm like, listen, I am at a 10 and I'm trying to get down to a four. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove myself. I'm going to go to my room. I'm going to, you know, get myself together and then I'm going to come back. Mm -hmm. So if you can give me a good 15 minutes, I need that moment to regroup and I can come back in or, you know, I'm not really feeling well. I'm going to read a book or I'm going to do my word puzzle, which I keep on me all the time so that I can just, again, these are just activities that I do for myself that allows me to not necessarily check out where I'm just like, I'm not available, but I do give myself that unavailable moment so I can do whatever is necessary mm -hmm. because we all need it. Yeah. And we don't take it enough. That's for sure. Absolutely. So you guys have rebranded. 
Mm -hmm. talk about the rebrand and the title. And I mean, this title, y'all, y'all better get, listen to this. <laughs> this title is amazing. When y'all told me, I was like, oh, yes. All right. Tell us the rebrand, the name, why you chose it, all the things. It's the new brand is Laughing Without Liquor. You know, and it's a woman's guide to living it up without the booze. And both Lane and I live in long-term recovery. Um, but I think that, you know, I see so many people today, especially mothers, reach for that bottle of wine after work. You know, it's like a, a girl's weekend away. There always has to be the wine. And, you know, I mean, I'm almost 50 now. And, uh, you know, I haven't drank for 11 years, but I still see people my age turning to that for that. I just need to go out, you know, and that's how I'm going to have fun. But Lane and I want to, you know, show women that you can have a blast without any of that. And we do have so much fun. You know, we did a field trip down in Venice Beach, California um, last month. And we had a, like, I was, I had tears in my eyes. I was uh, <laughs> laughing so hard at our games night. Right. And, you know, we just want to show women how to live their best life and laughing without liquor is perfect. And you remember all your memories, which is also fantastic. Yeah. That part. Cause you know, after a while, <laughs> wine gets into your system. You'd be like, I said that <laughs> I was there. I remember being right. there. Yeah. And I think what is sometimes I, tomorrow I'm going to, I'm going to bounce over this for a minute yeah. because you know, you, you said moms want, they reach for the drink just to have fun. And I think, you know, like I reach for the drink to not think mm -hmm. like to, to, to not think about the 5,000 things that I have to do or the family affairs that I have to, that I have to deal with. <laughs> right? Right. right. Like, so the drinking was like something to calm, calm my nerves or soothe me, but then it, you know, it didn't work that well either. So I don't know, laughing without liquor is really like what Tamar was saying, this, a tool to, to learn how to, you know, really enjoy your life without reaching for that drink. Yeah. I, I believe it too. You know, if you have to get a drink, if you have to do these things to step into the essence of who you think you are, I think you do, that's when you realize you don't know who you are. Because yeah. again, the ability to just simply exist in a space without saying, well, I'm the life of the party now. Um, mm -hmm. I now have the, the courage to ask for that raise now because I'm going to wait to send that email while I'm having a glass of wine. Um, <laughs> I'm going to confront a friend now because I, I've had a couple of drinks and now I feel like I can mm -hmm. talk about the things I should have said and mm -hmm. had a sober conversation about stuff that probably was really serious that was bothering you and you don't get a chance to say it. So I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. Well, it is our time, but I want to say thank you to you both because we, one, talked about amazing self-care and self-preservation. Mm -hmm. We got to learn about your amazing brand, about laughing without, was it laughing without liquor? Laughing without liquor. Mm -hmm. See, I want to make sure I said it right. Yeah. Um, just because again, I think both of these conversations are great. And there's somebody who's probably in their mindset thinking that it's probably time for them to like rechannel themselves, re not necessarily rebrand, but think about their choices when it comes to drinking or think about their choices, just being a sober mind. Um, and having a sober heart, because I feel like sometimes we don't we don't consider that as well. But we we have to have a sober mind and a sober heart to do any of the things that we're doing. And and you could you could jump in and do like a sober spring, right? Okay. And just kind of be sober for you. You know what I mean? Like it's every woman has to find her way through her life, especially as a mother. And uh, that might be a nice way to you know start sober sober spring. Listen, the sober, spring is actually a great time. Everybody has a beautiful mocktails out right now that you yeah. don't have to feel that guilt of like, I'm going out with my friends and what is going to happen? Like just yeah. a mocktail and just, you know, enjoy conversations and look yeah. at your friends and kind of see them. You may even see your friends and, and yourself in a different light too. Yes. Which happens absolutely. very, very often when you put soberness in your life. Mm -hmm. You get to see who people really are. You get to see who you are. It's, I, it's very, uh, it's a good thing to do. You know, just put it out there to my community. Y'all can do what you want to do. I'm just saying this is, this is, this is might be the, the move for you. This may be the move for you. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, it's fun to just, you know, have it on your radar, right? right? As a mother, like, oh, maybe that's something I should consider. It doesn't mean you have to do it today. It doesn't mean you have to do it tomorrow, but just consider it, you know, uh, 
I love drinking, so I'm not saying stop. I'm just, I'm just inviting people to consider, right? Right. I, I, I want mothers to be the best they can be, you know, right. I'm really committed to that. Uh, and I think self-preservation and having you, you know, having us on the show today, I just, I love this conversation toy time. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate both being on here and whatever I can do to support, let me know. I, you know, I just want to make sure that we get good conversations out for women, especially, and especially our moms, so we can be uplifted in beautiful communities and just really figure out our lives. Because again, we just have this short period of life. It doesn't matter if you live to be a hundred, that's still a short period of life. And there's no reason to live every single day hoping or wishing that you would have lived differently. Oh. Well, we have the space to really just put that energy into finding what differently or what makes us happy or what makes us tick and all these different things and really live, like fully live in your essence, like know who you are. So true. So true. All right. Well, thank you for this conversation. For all you that are listening, you already know the drill. In the show notes will be the link to the new brand, uh, Laughing Without Liquor. It will have all the things that you need to get to find them on these wonderful internet streets, as I like to call them, so that you can okay. join their community. <laughs> the internet streets is, is calling y'all. But because I know this is a clickable generation, we want to click, 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 click. We don't never want to type anything out. Do not worry. I have done all the work for you. All you have to do is click and you'll be able to get all the information that you need. Uh, thank you for listening to this week of Conversations with Toy, and we will see you next week. Thank you as always for joining me. And I know that even in the deepest or joyful conversations, that there's something we can learn and apply. Until next time, I hope that you are doing better. If not, we will be back to talk some more and handle it. Peace to you and yours. Stay grounded.